please welcome Stephen Armel. There's, there's smoke. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome to Belgium. Thank you for having me. Is this your first time in Belgium? Very first time. Yes. Any particular impression about Belgian or Belgians? Uh, oh, impression on Belgians? Everyone's very kind. I've gotten a lot of gifts. Um, I picked the wrong week to stop eating chocolate. <laughs> no, uh, everything has been lovely so far. We went on a nice tour of... Um, pronounce the city for me. Ghent? Pronounce it for me, please. Ghent? Ghent? Ghent. Ghent. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, I'm Canadian and it makes me upset when I was pronouncing it like, I was pronouncing it with the American pronunciation. I just, Ghent. Okay. Ghent. Got it. Okay. Good. Now in the UK, there's a famous drinking game, and that's a, that goes like, name three famous Belgians. Can you name three famous Belgians? Somebody give me a drink. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Uh, no, I can't. Well, who am I missing that I... Most often, when people ask to name famous Canadians, if they can't name hockey players, they just don't realize that certain people are Canadians. So, who's Belgian that I don't know is Belgian? Well, there's obviously a load of soccer players. Right, 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 right. If I was a, I'm a big sports fan, but I, I'm not up to date with the current members of your national team. And otherwise, in general, if you're any comics fans, uh, Tintin was drawn by a Belgian, Hergé. If you're a music fan and like to play saxophone, Adolf Sax was a guy who invented saxophone. And if you're an actor, uh, Audrey Hepburn was Belgian as well. Yes, she was? was born in Brussels. That's good enough. I'll ask you the same question tomorrow, so you can prepare tonight for... Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read the roster of your football team. Well, I'll make it easier for you. Three famous Canadians. Three famous Canadians. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to give you some that people don't know. Uh, well... Steve Nash? Um, Michael J. Fox? And Jim Carrey. All right. Now, you're an actor. What is like the one perk of being an actor? Huh? Aha. No, the actual answer to this question is that when you're growing up, people tell you all the time, when you're trying to figure out what you want to do, they say, well, you should do what you love. You should do what you enjoy. And that seems like a really simple concept. Okay, good, I'll do that. But it's not. It, it actually, it takes, I think, a long time, and it takes some patience, and it takes some maturity, and it takes some ability to be able to see things uh, beyond what's just in front of you. Um, but the big perk of being an actor is that I, I truly, truly, truly love what I do for a living, and I love going to work. It's very, very easy to put in a 12, 14, 16 hour day and a five or a six day week and if you really, really love what you're doing. All right. What would be the most unexpected thing about being an actor? The most unexpected thing about being an actor is... Um, you get people that explain very, very basic things to you that because they go through the process of explaining them, it makes you overthink them. Like, we have a lovely lady that's behind the stage right here, and she took me through a whole procedure on how to walk onto the stage. You know how you walk on the stage? You just walk on the stage. But because she took me through all that, I was like, oh God, I'm gonna trip. There's tape. Where do I go? Why is there smoke? 
all that stuff. So it's just one of those things where you just, you just kind of got to get used to it. You know what I mean? Everyone has the best intentions. As I can't see her, as does she. What's her name? Margo. Margo. Margo, I love you. She's single. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, Margo. Sorry, Cass. Sorry. Now, if you wouldn't have been an actor, what would you have liked to become? Yeah, I get that question all the time. Um, I don't know, because I, I, I never really had a, a passion for anything. Uh, so I guess if I were to go back to when I was a kiddo, I really did want to be a pro athlete. Doesn't matter, uh, baseball, football, American football, luge, doesn't matter to me. I wanted to be, you know, a professional athlete in some way, shape, or form. I don't think, it, I would have come close, but uh, I don't know. Now, if anybody here would say to you, I'd love to become an actor, give me one tip. What one tip would you give that person? Well, if you want to become an actor, you need to remember that it's a, it's a career, just like any other career. You have a resume. You know, when you... There's that thing that people talk about with acting where they speak about somebody's big break, right? So theoretically, my big break would have been uh, playing, the, playing the Emerald Archer. I'm not even going to say the name of the show. <laughs> um, but in reality, I had been in the business for close to, close to a decade, thereabouts, seven, eight years. And that job was my 10th job over the course of a two year period when I moved to Los Angeles. And all of those jobs had a through line to them. If you're if you graduate from medical school, you don't then become the head of surgery at the most prestigious hospital. You have to, you have to work in the ER, and you have to intern, and you, you have to do all the things you would have to do as a doctor to eventually graduate up to that position. And that's the thing that you should remember as an actor. Um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna get the lead role in the new Martin Scorsese film coming out of acting school. Maybe you could, maybe you could be in the background. Maybe you have a word. You know, one of my first jobs ever uh, on Degrassi: The Next Generation was uh, it was like one line, but it was important because what you learn is you learn what it's like to be on a film set, what people do when someone says "hit your mark." Well, if you don't know what that means, then you run the risk of upsetting the entire process of what they're doing that day by, by not knowing what you're doing, by delaying things. So I would say, just remember, you have a resume and approach it like it's, like it's a career, while at the same time remembering that you're not pursuing something that is totally results-oriented, like, say, banking or uh, becoming a lawyer or something like that. So just remember, it is art. But it's also a profession. Now, being on set can be exciting and exhausting. Do you have any rituals or go to places to wind down after a day of uh, acting? Yeah, I like my trailer. Yeah, I, I, since the. Since maybe 2015 or so, I've always had my, I've always had my own trailer. Um, it's an Airstream. Do you guys have air, well, Airstreams? You know what I mean? An Airstream, no, see, there you go. That's, it's an American trailer. They're, they're built in America. They're, they're the classic, they look like a silver bullet, right? Those, so I've had one of those on set since 2015, 2016 maybe. Um, and I like to go and chill out and like watch YouTube videos at the end of the day. That's my thing. Just like one of us. Um, yeah, I watch, uh, what do I watch? I watch chiropractic adjustment videos. <laughs> Super relaxing, earwax removal. Um. Oh, and especially, um, I love watching the videos where someone goes out into the forest and builds a cabin like, by themselves and lives there by themselves. I love it. Now, over the years, what would you say is the most valuable piece of advice? 
you've ever received either through experience or from one of your colleagues, like the one thing you go like, wow, that's the one thing that taught me so much. So, I, so with respect to, to can I give two things? Um, my, uh, my teacher back in high school, uh, a gentleman by the name of Courtney Shrimpton, um, when I was in high school, I had a variety of interests. Academics, sports, acting, you name it. If, if, if there was an activity, I, I, I put my hat in the ring. And he said to me, he said, you know, it's, it's good that you're trying to be good at all of these things, but at a certain point, you should try to be great at something, one thing. And I don't think that you should limit yourself to just that one thing, but that was really good advice to me, and for me. And uh, the other one was from John Barrowman back in, whatever. <laughs> back in 2000 and 2012. He actually said to me, and this was as it, as it pertained to fame and being recognized. He said, if you give people a little access to you, then they'll think that they're getting a lot of access. And thus, if you ask for space or privacy, they'll be very respectful of that. Whereas, if you hold everyone constantly at arm's length, they're just constantly gonna try to get in and get at you. So I, I just always thought that that was great because that, that has really made my life as a, as a public figure much more palatable. Talking about fame, love it or hate it? I love it. It's, it's amazing. I get, to, I, I get to do fun things all the time. Did you ever... Oh, and people give me things for free. <laughs> Did you ever use or abuse it to, you know, paint something like a table at a fully booked restaurant and stuff? Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I, try to, I try to use it to my... I try to use it... I try to use it to my advantage. But, in, but, but I always... I'm trying to go watch the NFL tomorrow night. And it's great. I was in... Um, and I met some people here today that were in Utrecht in, uh, in the Netherlands last year for a show. Also, I, I think it was a fact show as well. And, um, you know, I, I went on the Sunday night to a little small bar in Utrecht and watched the NFL. And I want to do it, you know, I want to do it, I want to do it again t tomorrow night. We have some spots, but it's like, if I go, they'll probably put on the game that I want and they'll reserve me a table, but like, I, I, I don't expect to, the drinks for free. I pay for the drinks, and if they want to take a photo and they want me to post about their spot that we went to, then I try to make it a quick pro quo, like an equitable exchange. But yeah, of course I use it to my advantage. Wouldn't you? I would too. That'd be like, that'd be like asking a tall person, like, hey, you ever, uh, you ever because you're tall, like, just go and reach for stuff off the top shelf? Of course they do. Of course. Is there any strange story you would like to share with us related to being famous? Well, um, I, it's, uh, I think like a weird story was say uh, we have um, we have a we have a nanny. Uh, we we've almost always had a nanny for our kiddos because my schedule gets so weird. I might have to I might be home for three months or I might have to go away for three months. So we have to make sure that we have support there for our kiddos. And when our daughter was very young, we used to put her on social media more than, than we do now. And our nanny was walking with her by our house in Los Angeles. And some guy came out of a tattoo shop and said to her, hey, um, I don't know you, but is that Stephen Amell's daughter? And she went, uh, maybe. And he went, well, I like him. And if you'd like a free tattoo, come on in. <laughs> That's weird. Did he tattoo your daughter? No. <laughs> now, how has becoming a father changed you? Oh, it's the, oh, how has it changed me? Oh, it's the best. Um, uh, hopefully it's made me, I think it's made me more patient. Um, I'm a little more tired. 
You ever think back longingly and, and think about the, the, the long week that you had and then you get to sleep for 12, 14 hours? Whew. It gets better. Oh, I know. Hey, it's, it's great. Except my wife and I did the smart thing where we got, our daughter was eight and a half and you're finally getting into them being independent. And then we made the smart decision to have another kid. <laughs> Um, and he's uh, he's getting there. He's 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 walking now, and he's he's starting to be able to uh, vocalize things, which is better than his uh, previous move, which is just screaming. <laughs> now, two final questions for me before we start. Sure. We have any questions from the audience? Can you tell us something about yourself, anything really, that very few people know? Something about me that very few people know. Um, I I don't know I don't know what 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 does the what's the rumor mill say? You know, it's like the quality or you're you're impatient or you like collecting rubber ducks like uh, Williams or what have you. No, I uh, well okay here's here's a weird thing you know the green room back there okay do you notice how all of the furniture in there is now organized? That was me. <laughs> I walk into a room and, like for example, if this was happening right now, if this, if that book was right there, all I could see throughout this entire panel is that book not being where it's supposed to be. So that's, that's it. A little OCD. Yeah, a, a little. All right, if you could organize your dream dinner with any person alive or dead, who would you invite to your dream dinner? I mean, right now, right now, I want the president of the AMPTP and the president of SAG to come to the dinner so that we can end this strike. <laughs> By the way, the, 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 the real effects of the strike haven't really like set in yet because everything, that's, everything that was made prior to everything going on strike is still coming out. It's about to be this weird, dead, pandemic-like period for content and um, yeah, I just would like to get it done. I would like to get back to work. I, I literally worry that I'm gonna get back onto set. I'm gonna be like, oh God, I forgot how to act. <laughs> These are things that keep me up at night, I promise you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's your time to shine. So there's two microphones, one on the left, one on the right. There's a few ground rules. English only, one question per person. Please respect the strike rules, so no questions about series, about actors, about movies. No asking for free hugs, free kisses, Stephen's room number. Um, I have it, you can write me. Um, and just articulate clearly in the microphone. So we're going to go left, right. Please go ahead. Hi, Stephen. Um, we all know that your beautiful wife, Cassandra, is really aware of what she's eating and what you are eating. So my question is, what would be the cheap food you wanted to see more often in your house that Cassandra is probably not wanted to? The eat? cheap food that I would like in my house? Oh, man. So the, the ironic thing is, is that believe it or not, over the long term, the healthier options are better you actually start to dislike the unhealthy options. But I just wish that there was a way for me to eat macaroni and cheese on a more regular basis without it really upsetting my stomach. Okay, That would you. be it. Hello. Um, a couple of years ago, you had a match in the WWE against uh, Cody Rhodes. How do you reflect to that moment? I mean, being able to be in the WWE and wrestle Cody, who was Stardust at the time, um, that was really, really special. Really special. 
uh, I grew up the WWE. <laughs> that's probably what I wanted to be when I grew up. Was it before a professional wrestler, before a professional athlete, a professional wrestler. So it was great to work with Cody. Great to be uh, a part of the WWE. They still treat me like family, which is amazing. Um, and then I got to narrate his documentary, which uh, I couldn't really talk about because we we didn't know if that was something that. I could promote because of the strike or not promote. It was right around the time when the strike initially happened, so there was a lot of hearsay. No one really knew. Um, but yeah, I, I, I loved it. And uh, I had some plans to do some stuff with WWE again, but we stopped because of the because of the strike. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Steven. Hi. I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, our stand is called Oliver, so yeah, kind of obvious. Um, my question for you is, and I think I'm not the only one with that question, what's with the beanies and the, and the caps lately? Did that become a thing when you became for a second time a father, or is there any other reason? No, there's no reason at all. I just, I just don't want to do my hair. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I've been in Los Angeles, it, it's freezing here relative to relative to there. But no, just beanies. I'll take it off. Would you like me to take it off? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, also, your son's name is Oliver? Yes. Our daughter was at uh, her school that she goes to. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. She was talking about a boy that she had a little crush on. This little guy wore a green hoodie to school every day and was named Arrow. It's not funny. Thanks a lot. Hi, Steven. How are you? Fine. Uh, what's the first thing you ate when you were in Belgium? Chocolate. <laughs> Which chocolate do you like? Um, I need to I need to do a thorough review. I feel like everything that I've had so far has been basic. I don't mean basic like not good. It's excellent, but just sort of very standard milk chocolate. What should I try? White chocolate. What, oh, I, 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 sorry, I've also had some white chocolate. <laughs> what, what else? I like stuff with a mint. Is there anything any sort of okay? All right, like different mint. wrong wrong country. Got it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. White. White chocolate, I got you. All right, thank you. So, if you have three wishes, what, what will you wish for? Three wishes? Yes. Um, health and happiness for my family. Um, I would uh, eventually like to work with Tom Cruise. And once again, please end the goddamn strike, please. That's it. Thank, thank you. you. Hi Steven, Hi. Um, my name is Emma and um, I'm still studying but my future job probably involves being in front of a lot of people but I still get very anxious about this so this is nerve-wracking um, but I was wondering if you had any help about like anxiety, being in front of people like that. I think that, that the first thing to remember is that when you're up here or when you're, when you're in a position where you're in front of a lot of people, the vast majority of people they just want you to succeed. They're rooting for you. And the other thing to remember is that absolutely nobody is perfect. I've had the, the very good fortune of, of officiating a couple of weddings for friends of mine. And as the person that's officiating, my job is to make sure that everyone really enjoys the ceremony, but nobody remembers me. Right? I'm not the, I should not be the focus. It should be the, the, the groom and the bride, right? So what I always try to do uh, in those scenarios, especially when people are trying to plan the perfect wedding and the perfect day, is I try to mess up very early on to cut the tension, right? Because everyone messes up all the time. So I, I would just say, um, are you gonna have to speak in front of a lot of people? I'm studying to be a sign language interpreter. Sign language interpreter, okay. 
Well, excellent. Good for you. Um, well, then I would say, so you're going to be up and you're going to be listening and you're going to be signing, right? Okay. Well, if you make a mistake, it's gone, right? Move on, right? And your mistake might just be a little flub. It's going to feel to you like you just accidentally punched yourself in the head. You didn't. Okay, I promise. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, Stephen. Uh, my name is Mirani. Thank you for finally coming to Gens. <laughs> just invited this year, but okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, my question is, uh, with all the life experience you have now, what would you tell your younger self? What would I tell my younger self? Be, be patient. Um, you know, I, I worked with this guy, I worked for this guy um, close to 20 years ago now. He said something to me that I always think about. He, he, he said that I needed to try to be more of a lateral thinker. By well, which he means that like, I was, I was uh, teaching exercise classes for him at the time and I wanted a raise. Like, I, I, I was like, I, I get X amount of dollars per class and I want this much more. Or, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna teach somewhere else. And he was like, well, I taught you, I trained you, I gave you this position. If you wanna go somewhere else, that's fine, but you should maybe think about what this opportunity got you and the community of people that you've met and the friends that you've made. And if five bucks more a class is worth giving all that up. So don't just think vertically, think horizontally and laterally, I guess. And I've, I've always listened to that. I've always tried to think about that. You know, it would have been very easy to keep doing the show that we were doing and do season 9 and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and probably just 14 um, but I wanted to go try something new because I wanted to expand myself and that was more of a lateral horizontal decision than it was a vertical one because if, if it had been about the vertical thinking it would have been just about finances and I just would have stayed shooting the last show so being patient, thinking that way, has been very helpful for me. That's what I would go tell my younger self. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Stephen. Uh, we saw each other this afternoon at the photo ops, and you probably don't remember this, but we saw already each other at 2016 and 17 and Heroes and Villains. Heroes and Villains, yeah. Yeah, London. After which, with a couple of friends, we went to a big charity event called F Cancer, which you organized which I had the golden opportunity and the rare opportunity to talk to a lovely, strong person and uh, which immediately became a hero of mine called Sandra Ann and just wanted to ask you how she was and uh, is she doing okay? Well, that's uh, Sandra, that's my mom. Thank you. That's lovely. Um, she's doing great. I was just texting with her. She is going to come and meet us. We are taking the train. Uh, to London uh, early this week. She's gonna come meet us there. She's doing wonderfully. Thank you. What was your name so I can say hi to her for you? Sharon. Sh Sharon? Yeah, Sharon. I N. I N. And as a little follow-up just at the end, I just wanted to thank you personally as someone who lost his grandfather to that horrible disease. Yeah. You're not only a personal hero of mine off-screen, but even more, <laughs> not only on-screen, but even more so off-screen. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Mom, my mom is going to be fired up, fired up. Hey! Hi, Steven. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question. My original one was concerning one of your shows, which I can right now. So I had to pivot a bit. And I was wondering, uh, I think I can ask this one. Is there anybody from like the Arrowverse you keep in touch with more than somebody else? Because you look like a one big family, friends, um, uh, well, I'd say that, uh, who do I see the most? I see John Barrowman uh, fairly often. 
Um, see, I see David Ramsey quite a bit. Um, gosh, who else? Grant, by any chance? Pardon me? Grant Guestin, by any chance? Yeah, I've, I saw Grant in, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a couple of months. Um, see Grant. I see Danielle Panabaker all the time, believe it or not. Yeah, and her husband um, in Los Angeles. And then um, I see Greg Berlanti, the, the guy that created the whole thing uh, sporadically in LA, too. All right, great, thanks. Thank you. All right, Stephen, we got time for two more questions. I don't have to wrap it up, so go ahead. Yeah, we got we got four more questions, and so we'll wrap it up. I'll be fast. Okay. My questions, quick answers. Go, go, go. Hi, Stephen. Um, I'm a bit nervous, sorry, because I don't have a question. I have an apology. Hurry up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At one point in your career, um, me and my wife were watching something and you were doing this thing with the bars. Yeah. And my wife was, of course, looking at the screen, uh, fascinated. Every time I told her, like, it's not real. It's CGI, it's something, it's a trick, it's practical. I want to apologize because I know it was real, but I just hated the look on my wife's face. <laughs> Is she here? No, luckily not. No. But at least... I got it off my chest. The lie is gone. I can tell you now. I'm sorry, but I had to do it because it was unbearable. Do you know the ironic thing about that? It was fake. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Totally real. Totally real. What's your wife's name? Damn it. That's, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Stephen. Uh, I told my brother I was coming to Facts and he was really jealous uh, because he's a really big fan of yours. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could maybe uh, take my be real so I can show off to him that I met you. you your what? My be real. It's just a picture on my phone. And oh, yeah. After the panel. I got you. We'll meet you right there. All right. Thank you. Got you got it. Okay. A really fine one on our schedule. So final question. Okay. Make it a good all right. one, all right? It's really sorry. That was two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, I was wondering, what was your funniest interaction you've got with a fan? Like, have you ever been mistaken for another actor or something? I've never been mistaken for... Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I was watching a World Cup match in, 20, in, in 2018. And I was sitting there, I was sitting at the bar. It was Russia versus... Uh, uh, it was an it, it important match. It was a quarterfinal, semifinal, something to that effect. And I sat at this bar for the entire match, two plus hours extra time and penalty kicks and this guy was like I just wanted to say I really really loved you in Batman Forever <laughs> what else he went NCIS LA and Batman and Robin and I went okay and he went thanks very much Chris have a wonderful day <laughs> nice thing is is I went okay cool uh, what else has he been in? Oh yeah, and he goes, oh, and he was in Arrow. And I went, Chris O'Donnell was in Arrow? <laughs> that was funny. All right, thank you very much. Uh, hi, Stephen. Hi. So, uh, 10 years ago, I lived a, for a year in Vancouver, and so I discovered your show there, and yeah. then even after I came back, it brought me a lot of comfort because I could recognize some places uh, in Vancouver. Sure. So my question to you is, what's your favorite spot over there? My favorite spot in Vancouver, yeah. uh, well, uh, just off the coast of Vancouver is Bowen Island, which we named our son, Bowen, um, which is really neat. And then we, we had a lovely apartment, it was down in, in the Yale Town, Falls Creek area. Um, my wife and I were actually joking yesterday because we went and did the canal tours <laughs> and the, the weather outside right now. This is Vancouver for October, November, December, January, February, March. Most of April, some of May, a little bit of June, July, yeah. August, and September. But um, but I just uh, yeah I was reminded of like this it again it's reminds very me of similar weather. yeah very yeah. similar. Thank All right, you. thank you. Stephen, really final question. Final final, make it a good one. No pressure. Hey, how you doing? Um, my question probably isn't gonna be a good one, but me and my buddies were just wondering where did you get your hoodie from. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, so there's this company that's called Gecko Hawaii, Gecko, G-E-C-K-O, Hawaii, uh, and they were, like, they were really big in the, in the 90s when I was a kid, and they just re-released all their stuff. 
Really? Yeah. Were they expensive? Uh-uh. <laughs> but they don't make very many of them. Oh. So I actually, I lucked into this one because it was an XL, and normally I wouldn't wear an XL, but now I only wear XLs because I like it. <laughs> all right. Thank you. That's really all we got time for. Ladies and gentlemen, right. give it up for Steven!